So, if you're wondering how Primordial Malzano's going... I can't believe this. Oh my god, this is the coolest monster I've ever seen! Hello, my fellow hunters! It's here, the final chapter of Sunbreak. The bonus update, the end of it all. And, well, they said they wanted to go out with a bang. And <laughs> this is... I mean, bravo. I don't know where to begin. Oh, shit! I have such endless praises to sing. I, I'm... What was that? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I... I'm just so imp it's beautiful, it's sad, it's right. This ties up Sunbreak, the story, the characters, everything we've done through Rise all the way to now in such a lovely little poignant bow. And it's just a right ending. It's not crazy or anything. It's just so well done. It's fitting and it's just lovely. I just kind of have this moment of, oh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, and then we get the actual hunt itself, ignoring the story reveals and implications and such, but actually seeing Malzano as this heroic savior, knightly elder dragon who's not a kingdom destroyer, but a kingdom protector. Granted, as a, you know, accident of just defending his own territory that happens to be the kingdom, but it's really cool seeing the theories come true and having a Malzano that is normal. Our usual red curioed Malzano is actually the variant, and primordial Malzano the variant is actually the standard base Malzano, and my god, apparently standard base Malzano is the most ridiculously powerful, painful, incredible hunt you've ever experienced. Is it better than a Matsu? I can't answer that question! It's suddenly as good in its own right. Of course, it's not a big boss spectacle arena type feel. It's much more intimate, but that makes it so much more poignant. Just first walking onto the hunt and seeing how noticeably bright and almost heavenly and clear the Citadel is, it just kind of lifts you for what this battle will be, and it's almost mournful in a way. I, I barely even touched on the moveset, but it, there is so many changes and surprises, new combos, new attacks, because obviously he can't fight with the Curio for the most part. But that, I, look, I, I, I want to stop myself there because I don't want to rob this experience from you guys. I just want to tell you that the hunt and the story surrounding it is so worth doing, satisfying, and fun that you just need to do it. This Primordial Malzano fight, apart from being a worthy challenge and a perfect send-off hunt, is just really well implemented. There's so many surprises, tricks, things that you won't expect, the way it develops, even how Fearain interacts with it. You feel as you go along, as you whittle him down, things will change and uh, you might start to look at him just a little bit differently. His ultra attack is unbelievable, but again, I don't even want to show you it because you need to see it. I don't often do this in these fight reviews, but I think that this one is certainly one that I just want you to go and cart to. But when you finish carting to him, of course, you can take his skin and wear it. Sorry, my Balthazak just came over me for a second. And I mean... It's so cool! Now, obviously, I prefer the red as a general color scheme, but I cannot deny uh, that this is absolutely 10 out of 10 design. It's perfect, it's beautiful, and it, of course, has a brand new skill on it. That skill, well, let's go through the others, of course. First, we're looking at Blood Rite Full, of course. Bit of Power Breaker, bit of Critical Boost, and a bit of burst. This then leads us to uh, Blood Awakening. This is his brand new skill, and essentially it translates to thus. When you hit a monster 
and either blood right triggers or blood blight healing triggers, i.e. you gain health via dealing damage in some way, you will then also on top of that get an attack boost for doing so. Which obviously sounds awesome. Basically, it's, hey, have this defensive healing skill, but actually it's no longer a defensive healing skill, it's an offensive skill too, so you get the best of both worlds. Woohoo! So, of course, testing will happen. I will thoroughly investigate it, go over it. That will be a follow-up. But on principle, this sounds like a really cool idea to make Blood Rite a kind of meta skill that everybody can feel really good about using, even though a lot of people do already use it, because it is just such a fun skill to actually have. The armor themselves then, well, it's not the kind of Fatalis Atalkar, this is just the new best set, everyone's gonna wear it, forget about all your old builds, that I was perhaps expecting. It's not bad, it is absolutely covered in slots, so it does make a great template set. The helmet has all three ranks of Blood Rite, which is really, really good. It's uh, got two four slots, that's a lot of space, the chest, two fours, and a two uh, alongside one of those blood awakenings and a critical boost. The waist, two four slots again, and a two with two bursts and a critical boost. This is probably the weakest piece of all five, and I would definitely say more than likely the least used, unless you are a big burst uh, lover, and even then, there are better ways to go about getting it. It also, of course, depends if curious crafting and talismans can now Roll Blood Awakening, though I'd be surprised if that was the case. They probably want this armor to remain, you know, special. The legs then, Blood Awakening, Critical Boost, and all three part breaker. So essentially, if Blood Awakening is good, you'll basically wear the helmet, chest, gloves, and legs for a nice uh, little self-synergistic set with loads of decoration slots and build everything out from there. I doubt that will outdo proper min-max from title update 5, but I think it's got a real shot of being something special. A dogging of something special, his weapons. His weapons, if you are using them, have a little special effect. They will increase the healing that you get from Blood Blight and Blood Right. So, for us great swords, it really is just going to be a full heal per charge attack that lands. Though that was already the case, so it's not like we need to use this. But is it good? Ah, it's really hard to say. It's not bad. It's 320 uh, raw with uh, purple sharpness. Obviously, once it gets uh, augmented up, you'll have more purple than you will ever need, and uh, you'll have a decent raw. But it doesn't have a status, which means no build-up boost, so that's a big negative. But as you're seeing, that's a lot of slots. Three, four slots. If you look at that as, oh, this great sword comes with plus six attack, you know, something like that, that starts to look a lot better. It really does. That that's, uh, well, in itself, like an 8% damage boost, so definitely some maps will need to be done. I don't think they are the- well, that's it now, everybody's just gonna be using Brave All Your Mouths no, but I also don't think they're completely anticlimactic, and suddenly with the extra healing, I think you can do a lot of fun yet powerful builds, and really, fun yet powerful is the best build category, is it not? So that's the kind of general look at everything, just, just awesome, just all, just all so awesome. And we have a few new decorations too, we have double spare shot, double blood right, and then the new inspiration skill. Which is the attack for everyone when you give everyone a positive effect, like melodies, like probably pouring out demon powder, and so on and such forth. That said, then, it's about it. There is the new, of course, Curious Decoration option, which, yeah, can result in some seriously upped decoration slots, so everything can uh, kind of be the decoration level of Primordial Miles and Ogier, so that's definitely neat and worth playing around with. You might be better curiousing for decorations if you're looking for a skill that is on a decoration than just trying to get the skill straight up. In fact, I would imagine that's almost guaranteed to be the case, but uh, more exploring is needed. Generally then, this bonus update really does feel fantastic. It's not huge, but it doesn't need to be. It is just a perfect, poignant, and one hell of a hunt ending to one hell of a monster hunter game that is Sunbreak. And honestly, Sunbreak, I salute you. 
and it's been such a good time. Of course, there'll still be plenty of Sunbreak, Pro and Noob, as we go forward and head to uh, the eventual uh, reveal of Monster Hunter 6, and whenever that happens, and however it happens, but there is, of course, a moment of sadness knowing that this is the last new thing other than event quests that we'll get in Sunbreak. So, with all that said, like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.